the topic of our today's lecture is helical extension spring helical extension spring is a spring which is extended when a tensile force is exerted upon it and it is manufactured in such a way that the coils of the spring touches each other and there is almost negligible space between the two consecutive coils helical compression and extension springs are similar in the body but the difference between the two is that helical extension spring needs some means to transfer the force to the body that mean can be using a screw on the ends of the spring or using a hook on the wire of the spring at the ends this is the animation of helical extension spring and force is exerted in this direction and these are the hooks that are used to transfer the force to the body of the spring now let's talk about its uses there are many uses of this spring but here we will discuss only two uses you might have seen the tractor while pluffing this is the pluff and you can see this extension spring is used in it and this is another pluff over here the spring is used another use is that it is used in spring balance to measure the mass of an object on the right is the helical extension spring used in the spring balance and this is the hook used to transfer the weight of the object to the body of the spring this is also a spring balance and these are the helical extension springs used to measure the weight of the object since it needs hooks or screw at the ends of the spring so let's discuss some of the common types of the hook the first one is machine half loop open spring if this is the complete coil or loop and you divide it in two parts so this is the half loop and this half loop is used at the ends as a mean to transfer the force to the body then the second one is raised hook and you can see that its length is greater than machined half loop hook that is why it is called raised hook then the third one is short twisted loop it is similar to the machined half loop hook but the difference between the two is that it is slightly twisted over here then the last one is full twisted loop it is similar to the raised hook but the difference between the two is that it is slightly twisted over here now let's talk about the stresses in the hook you know that extension spring have a body and a hook at the ends so stresses in the body will be different than stresses in the hook but in the hook there are two type of stresses stress will be appeared in the loop of the hook that is named as a or they will occur at position a and second stresses will be appeared in the position of the hook where the hook is twisted and that twisted position is named as point b and the third type of stresses will be appeared in the body of the spring which is represented by tau and it is equal to kb into at fd divided by pi d cube so let's discuss the stresses in the loop or at point a and you can see that the loop is not a straight wire but it is like a coil so there will be two type of stresses one will be bending and other one will be axial this is that loop and this is the radius of that loop at this position a this position a is critical position and there is more chances of the hook to fail over here and the stresses at the point a is equal to k a 16d divided by pi d cube plus 4 divided by pi d square whole into f now this part is direct stress and this one is bending stresses k a is actually bending stress correction factor now this k a is equal to 4 c1 square minus c1 minus 1 divided by 4 c1 into c1 minus 1 now what is c1 c1 is equal to 2 r1 divided by d and r1 is the radius of the hook loop and d is the wire diameter now let's talk about another critical position b which is a twisted position means where the hook is twisted and there will be torsion stress as the hook is twisted and the radius of the twist is r2 and the stress at position b is equal to kb into at fd divided by pi d cube this kb is stress correction factor for curvature and it is equal to 4c2 minus 1 divided by 4c2 minus 4 and c2 is equal to 2 r2 divided by d r2 is the radius of the twist as i earlier told you that stresses in the body of the spring is equal to kb into at fd divided by pi d cube where kb is equal to 4c plus 2 divided by 4c minus 3 and c is equal to mean coil diameter divided by wire diameter 
so to check whether the spring is solid shape or not we should calculate the stresses at point a b and the body close wound extension spring close wound means that whenever extension spring is manufactured such that the coils will touch each other and there is no space between two coils then such type of spring is called close wound spring the purpose of mentioning the close wound spring is that extension spring can be both closed wound or they may not be closed wound means that there will be slight distance between two coils and the coils will not touch each other but still it will be helical extension spring closed wound spring is manufactured in such a way that some initial tension is locked in in the spring which will help to hold the free length more accurately and to extend the this spring you will have to cross this initial tension first whenever you exert the amount of force that will be equal to the initial tension after that extension will start let's say this is the helical extension spring which is closely wound and the initial tension in this spring will be in this direction the nature of the initial tension or forces is compressive and it keeps the spring to be closely wound so it will help to increase the strength because you will have to cross this initial tension in order to extend this spring the load deflection curve is offset by this initial tension fi in order to understand let's draw the load deflection curve load on y-axis and deflection on x-axis this is the offset or fi and when it is crossed then deflection will start like this this is the deflection y and this is the initial tension this is the total force exerted to bring y amount of deflection f is equal to this fi uh, plus this which is this k into deflection y now let's talk about some of the terminologies related to helical extension spring free length is the length of this spring when it is not yet forced it is the distance between the inner ends of the hooks of helical extension spring with no load exerted this is the free length and this is the inner end of one hook and this is the inner end of another hook and you can see that the free length is the distance between the inner ends of the two hooks this is the gap and this is the length of the body of the spring this is the inner diameter this is the outer diameter and this is the mean coil diameter this is the wire diameter this is the loop length this is the hook length free length represented by l naught is equal to 2 into mean coil diameter minus wire diameter plus d into number of coils in the body of the springs plus 1 now let's see where this formula came from free length l naught is equal to this length of the body plus this length which is equal to d by 2 plus this length which is also equal to d by 2 and d by 2 plus d by 2 will give you d so body length plus d plus this loop length and this loop length or hook length so two hook length if you see over here this is the wire diameter d so as the number of coils increases the length of the body will increase so this one will be equal to 1d 2d 3d this will be 4d and up to nb d so length of the body is equal to nb into d now to find hook length let's take this mean coil diameter d and if we subtract this distance which is wire diameter divided by 2 and this distance which is also equal to wire diameter divided by 2 so both of them will make wire diameter and if you subtract it from mean coil diameter it will give you hook length so hook length is equal to mean coil diameter minus wire diameter divided by 2 minus wire diameter divided by 2 and these two makes wire diameter so mean coil diameter minus wire diameter is equal to hook length so taking the common from this it will give you d into nb plus 1 now again take the d common from the whole equation it will give you d into nb plus 1 plus 2 into mean coil diameter divided by wire diameter minus 1 this mean coil diameter divided by wire diameter is equal to c so replace it by c now multiply this 2 with the values in the bracket so it will become 2c minus 2 plus 1 minus 2 will give you minus 1 so l naught is equal to d into this 2c minus 1 plus nb as i told you earlier that when a wire is coiled around a shaft initial tension or compressive forces are locked in in the spring this initial tension will be used to increase the strength of the spring 
because to extend this string you will have to cross this initial tension first after then the spring will start deflecting now let's talk about the preferred range for the amount of initial tension that should be incorporated into the spring and for this this graph should be used this graph is plotted between index c and torsional stress which is uncorrected and that is caused by the initial tension this is in mega pascal and this is kilo psi you have these three lines above this line it will be difficult for you to attend this initial tension and in this range it will be difficult for you to control the spring this is the preferred range means you should keep the initial tension in this range and this range can be used if there is a special request means this range is used for special designs this is the formula that is used to find out the amount of initial stresses that should be incorporated into the spring here this c is the index and it is equal to a mean coil diameter divided by wire diameter 